In this video, you will be informed on the topic of maintaining the pH of blood. So first, what does pH stand for? Well, pH is an abbreviation for power of hydrogen. What is the pH scale? The pH scale is a logarithmic scale. The scale reads from 0 to 14. When the pH value is between 0 and 7, the, the solution is acidic and contains more hydrogen ions. When the pH value is between 7 and 14, the solution is basic and contains less hydrogen ions. The solution is neutral for the pH value 7. Ideally, the pH of blood is between 7.35 and 7.45. How does pH of blood become imbalanced? There are two conditions to look at here. Acidosis is when the pH in blood is below 7.35. Alkalosis is when the pH in blood is above 7.45. When these conditions occur, the body will be unable to function and death may take place. But thankfully, there are compensatory mechanisms to regulate pH. Long-term regulation of blood pH works within hours to days and is primarily controlled by the kidneys. They can secrete and reabsorb hydrogen in and from the blood as needed. The kidneys can also secrete and reabsorb bicarbonate in and from the blood as needed. Next, let's look at a midterm compensatory mechanism of pH, and this works within minutes. This is the lungs. The lungs are able to blow off CO2 as carbon dioxide makes the blood acidic, or they can retain CO2 as needed. The lungs can also get rid of some acetic acid by breathing out. These are regulated by breathing rate and depth. So now we'll look at the quickest regulator of blood pH, which works within seconds. These are called buffers. Buffers are chemicals that bind up hydrogen or drop it into blood to adjust acidity. We are going to look at two buffer examples. One of those is protein, and we're going to focus especially on hemoglobin because it is found in red blood cells, therefore making it perfectly positioned to adjust pH. So. Amino acids always have an amine group on one end, a carbon center, and then they have a carboxyl group. They also have an R group, which makes them unique from one another. If the blood is too alkaline, the NH3 can actually drop off hydrogen to become NH2. If the blood is acidic, it can grab that hydrogen and hold it close, so, a low, so it no longer affects blood pH. The protein can do the same thing on its other end. If the blood is acidic, it can grab hydrogen and hold it close so it no longer makes the blood acidic, or it can drop off hydrogen if the blood is too alkaline. Now, one other buffer system is the carbonic acid bicarbonate system. In the blood, carbon dioxide will mix together with water and they will form a weak acid called bicarbonate. Because it is a weak acid, it can actually take another form. So breathing rapidly removes carbon dioxide from the system and that will raise blood pH. Breathing impaired retains carbon dioxide which decreases pH. You should consider monitoring the body pH level on a weekly basis. This can be done using Hydrion test strips which can be available in drugstores. To use the pH paper, rip off a strip and dip it into the solution being tested. The paper will change color instantly. Immediately compare the resulting color to the color chart that accompanied the kit. The closest matching color indicates the pH level. There are ways to help your body regulate its pH balance. The most important is a healthy diet. Since blood is very slightly alkaline, it is important to eat a diet that is alkaline in nature. 
Most processed foods and animal byproducts tend to be more acidic. Meanwhile, whole foods, vegetables, and fruits tend to be more alkaline. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned more on the topic of maintaining the pH of blood. Thank you for watching.